process what happened after that? Yeah, a little bit. We've had a, a couple of quiet days as, as a group. Um, there was a lot of discussion, um, you know, particularly Sunday night, just reflecting on, on what had happened, particularly in that last hour. But um, I think the overwhelming feeling was it was a, a pretty resilient fight back from the group to get back into a position to, to draw the test. And, um, you know, we could have sort of won it at the end there. So, you know, both sides fought extremely hard and, um, you know, it turned out to be one of the best test matches ever. So, um, you know, it was exciting to be a part of, but, um, you know, I think as of today, we've sort of switched into one day mode and, and understand how important these games are. Absolutely. You know, we want a contest. We want really competitive cricket. And that's what it's been throughout the series so far. And we're expecting much of the same tomorrow. Um, you know, both sides pretty much need to win. Um, you know, that's what, what, you know, certainly the mindset we're going out there with. Um, but we, we understand it's going to be a pretty difficult challenge against, you know, a side who um, has shown, you know, particularly over the last couple of weeks, how, how good they can be. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, obviously, the, the fast bowlers had a bit of a heavy workload, which you, you expect in a test match, I suppose. Um, but as far as I know, there's no real injury concerns. It's just yeah, a matter of picking our best team and, and making sure we're, we're managing the young fast bowlers as well. I think that's that's important. You know, We've got these three ODIs that we want to win, but, but um, you know, the World Cup coming up as well. So we need to make sure we manage that right. Oh, I guess it allows us to settle into a bit of a rhythm with the, the one format. But, you know, the whole way through this series, we've been focusing on the Ashes um, and, and winning that. That's our aim. Um, the World Cup will, will take care of itself sort of afterwards. We, we don't want to think too far ahead because, you know, as soon as we do that, you know, it will come crashing down pretty quick. So we're very focused on tomorrow. Um, it's a massive game. Uh, you know, we, we know England are going to come out pretty hard at us. So we've got to be ready for that and then, um, you know, push back as best we can. Uh, yep, yep, Megan will come back in um, and we're just working on what the other sort of bowling lineup looks like. We, we, you know, we, we do still have till sort of two o'clock tomorrow to wait and see how the fast bowlers particularly pull up. So we'll sort of wait until that happens tomorrow morning before we make a call, but Shooter will definitely come back. Yeah, very eager to get back into it. Um, you know, she would have loved to play the test and we would have loved to have her, but I think overall it was a very smart decision, um, you know, for her personally. She, she's had a bit of an interesting lead in with, with COVID and, and not being able to, to train as much as she would have liked. So it just was a, a smart decision in the end, but she's, she's keen as mustard to get back into it tomorrow. Yeah, I think that just naturally happens with our squad because we've got so many all-rounders um, and, and all those, you know, those all-rounders are genuine sort of top six, seven batters. So, um, you know, it looks like we've got, um, you know, Talia might be down at six or seven. You've got Ash Gardner as well, um, Annabelle Sutherland. So they, they probably are batting a little bit lower than they would have liked, but that's because we've got a, a strong top six. But they provide us, op, you know, options with the ball as well, which is something we've felt like is really important for us over the last few years is to have options um, and players who can play multiple roles within the side. Uh, yep, absolutely. She'll be in our 50 over side. Um, she'll, she'll be batting at four, as she has done for a long period of time. And um, she's a world-class player in, in you know, particularly the 50 over format and the test format. She's shown that over a long period of time. So um, I know she's really eager to make a really big impact on, on this um, part of the series and, and moving forward as well. So looking forward to that. Uh, we've sort of split the two at this stage. We've obviously picked an ODI squad for this part of the, the Ashes and we'll stick with that. Um, you know, we can go outside that if, if necessary, um, you know, injury or illness, but um, you know, we feel like we've picked that squad for the conditions here. Um, and you know, if, if the conditions change or something pops up, we can certainly look at it. But, but for the moment, the squad that we've got here, we feel like really covers us and gives us um, yeah, enough strength in, in all different areas. Oh, 
she's really positive. I've seen her on the golf course over the last couple of days, um, which she's been enjoying, which, which is really good for her to be able to switch off and, and the group as well. So um, not worried about Elisa at all. Um, you know, she's a world-class player, has been for a long period of time, and she's an opening battery in a test match, and sometimes you, you get good balls and you get out. Um, that's the nature of it. So um, she's in a good spot, and, and I can't wait to see her in these games. Yeah, I think that the difficult part is that, you know, in the last few test matches that I've played in, weather's played a big role. So I, I think four days is enough if we don't get rain, which um, has proved to be quite difficult over the last few test matches. You know, I think, you know, there certainly would have been a result in the Indian test match. There would have been one here. Um, so I, I do think that's enough. I think it does promote, um, you know, good scoring rates and I think we've seen in this test match you know a lot of these players within the sides have played a few test matches now so I think you start to get the hang of it and understand the format a bit more so the more we play the better we'll get and I think four days is enough it, it just sort of whether you get to a point with with the weather and if you lose a certain amount of time can you trigger a fifth day something like that I, but I think you know if we can stay with the four-day test matches I think there will be results as long as we're playing on good wickets and I think the wicket here was very good test test match wicket there was enough Enough in it for bat, you know, batters and bowlers, um, and, and that's the important part of it as well. Um, you know, I think we saw a, a test match at the Wacker quite a number of years ago where there was a result as well, um, which England was playing in. So if we can get the, the wickets right, then I think a four-day test is enough. And, and so also, I guess, related as well, it, there I think is also an argument that because then only probably three, four countries would, would play in test cricket if there was more of it at this stage, um, would that then more of a divide that's already kind of there in a way between countries that invest a lot in women's cricket and those that don't? Uh, but potentially, but you know, I think there are a lot of positives that could come out of it as well. Um, you know, I think the likes of South Africa, New Zealand, um, you know, they could certainly play in test matches as well. So you know, that will grow over time. You know, a couple of years ago, they, they wouldn't have said that they're looking at that. So it'll grow over time. You know, we still need to make sure that cricket around the world is is moving forward and and not sort of we're not leaving nations behind but I think the international women's championship in fact there's 10 teams in that now that will certainly help in terms of bringing those smaller nations or you know lower nations up um, and and allow them to play cricket which I think is the most important thing so um, you know I think we can get the balance right um, because I think if we can get some more test matches up between um, you know the bigger nations I guess if you want to call it that um, you know I think that's going to grow the game as well. Yeah, it's something that's really important to our group and over a couple of years now we've really committed to educating ourselves and, and having a greater understanding for the Indigenous culture and, and this is just another step forward for us. We have worn it previously, I think in 2020, um, at this ground as well um, and, and something the group loves doing. Um, there's a lot, to, a lot to learn and understand and, and listen to, I guess, and, and this is just a sign of our, our commitment and it's great to see the men's team. Um, I think they were supposed to wear it as well this summer. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of just a sign that, that we're committed to educating ourselves and also trying to um, you know, just create conversations and, and really understand um, the, the different cultures in Australia.